Hey, this is Joe from Personas. In this video, I'm gonna show you three ways to add reverb to your recording in Studio One. For the Studio One veterans among us, you probably know all of these, but if you're just starting out, you may not know one, two, or maybe all three, so I'm gonna show you. Here is a blank session in Studio One, completely blank. First thing we're gonna do is add a track. We can do that here or by pressing the letter T on the keyboard. I'm gonna call it vocal. I'm gonna set it to input three. That's the input my microphone is plugged into. Um, it is a mono track because it's just one microphone and the color is of course yellow because that's the official color of a vocal. And here it is. I'm gonna drag it here to make it bigger. We gotta do one more thing so we can record something and then we're gonna add some reverb to that. So if I press this record button, okay, we can see that my microphone is now passing signal to this channel. Now we can just press record down here which I have mapped to the forward slash or backslash button on my keyboard so I can record something real quick. Okay, let's record that. So this is going to be amazing. Brace yourself. Boots, cuts, boots, cuts, boots. Mm, told you. Did you get goosebumps? Because I sure did. Okay. Uh, all right, so let's loop this uh, so we can listen to it over and over. The way I'm going to do that is this little gray bar up here allows me to loop. So I can just say loop from here to about here and just repeat that sucker over and over to turn this loop on. Right now it's not technically on. It's just, it's just showing me where the loop would be. Click this button down here that turns the loop on and off, which I can also do by pressing the other slash button on my keyboard. I use the backslash, I think, for record, and the forward slash, the one next to the shift key, turns that loop on and off. So now we have this beauty. Boots, cuts, boots, cuts, boots, cuts, boots, cuts. Woo, woo, inspiring. Okay, so what I want to do is I want to add reverb to this. For whatever reason, I want it to be like, boots, cuts, boots, cuts, like it's in a big, huge room. Which, real quick, what is reverb? You you probably have heard it at least. I mean, you're watching this video, you have probably some idea, but in case you don't, reverb is like a fake room sound. Imagine hearing me right now in this little room over my garage. My voice sounds a certain way, pretty dry. You can hear a little bit of the room if you have headphones on. If I clap, you can hear there's some, <laughs> I clipped the mic. There is some sound in the room that you hear. If I were in a cathedral, there's this beautiful church here in Nashville that has like a six second decay time on the natural reverb of the room. If I had this mic in there, you would hear, I would clap and it would go. And it can be a beautiful thing. Sometimes. So if you're trying to play drums, it can be difficult. So anyway, that being said, I want to add reverb to this. So how can I do that? There are three ways to do that. There's actually lots of ways to do it, but the three primary ways that I use reverb are as such. We'll start with the simplest one. First of all, where is the reverb? Like, how do we get to it? Well, we can press F3 and that will pull up our mixer. This is kind of the, if we had a bunch of channels here, you'd see a bunch of faders, one for each channel uh, that we've recorded. But there's still no reverb here. Uh, but if we press F7 on our keyboard, boink, you can see it pulls up this list of effects. And I've got mine, I click on the vendor tab here, so I can see all the Personas plugins together in one group. And the one I'm looking for uh, is Room Reverb. This is the reverb inside of Studio One Artist and Professional. If you're using Studio One Prime, you can do this with Mixverb. But the idea here is if I click on this, I can then see a bunch of different presets. I'm gonna go for Flat Plate. I like plate reverbs and it's gonna make it really obvious to hear. So how do I get this to here? I wanna put flat plate reverb on this track. Well, Studio One has this thing called drag and drop. I just drag it on here. Click, drag, let go. And now, if I just hit play without touching anything, boots, cuts, boots, cuts. you can now hear there's reverb on there. Now, a couple of things to think about. This is one way to do reverb. I don't do it this way a whole lot um, for reasons I'll talk about in a second. One of the reasons is this is a mono vocal track, meaning single track up the middle. It doesn't have a left and a right sound to it because it's one sound. If you listen to this reverb, you'll hear that reverb is in mono as well. Boots, cuts, boots. 
it's a lot like a guitar player, like myself, if I plug this guitar into a reverb pedal into that amp and record it with one microphone, it's a single mono sound. It doesn't have a left and a right. It's not bad, that's just the way it is. Um, if I record it into two amps and had a reverb that split one out to the left and one to the right, then we have some sort of a stereo sound. There's a couple ways if you want to get the stereo sound here, we can do that by coming up to this channel and clicking on this little button here. So this is kind of the symbol that tells us this is a mono channel. If I click on that, you'll see it split and look like a stereo channel. Now the recording is still mono, but now we can have stereo effects on the channel. So just by clicking that, now if I press play now, we should hear a stereo reverb. Boots, cuts, boots, cuts. Now that's pretty cool. And I can adjust the amount of reverb, blah, 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 reverb by coming in here and adjusting this mix knob. If I set it to 100%, that means all we're hearing is reverb and we're not hearing any of the direct signal. Boots, cuts, boots, cuts. And if I set it to 10%, we're not hearing the reverb at all. Boots, cuts, boots, cuts, boots, cuts. If we want to make it real long, we can adjust the length here. Now it's ridiculous. <laughs> Pretty epic. Um, so this is a very easy and simple way to put reverb on a channel. I mentioned before, this isn't the way that I typically use. Why is that? Because I may want this reverb on my snare drum, on my entire drum kit, maybe on the guitar and on the vocal uh, and on a bunch of background vocals. And this way means I have to put this plugin on every channel. So if we were to duplicate this track, right now I've got this reverb plugin on every channel, okay? And if I want to adjust how that reverb sounds, I've got to open up the reverb on each, let's say I want to have more reverb on all of these background vocals I just recorded. I have to open up this one and turn it up, open up this one, turn it up, open up this one, turn, you can see how that's not super ideal. If I just need reverb on one track and I have no intention of putting another, re another track into that reverb, then fine, this is a great way to work. However, the way I like to do reverb is a little bit different. So let's get rid of this reverb. I'm gonna click here and choose remove, okay? And I'm gonna come back up here and make this channel mono because I don't have to make this change with the way I'm about to add the reverb. So remember when I drag this reverb onto this channel? That's what we just did to get that reverb there. That's the first way. The second way is to drag the reverb under this send section. Now watch what happens when I let go. It does a couple of things. It adds the reverb, we can see the window pop up, but it also did a few other things. It added a send on this channel and then added a secondary, what we call an effects channel that has the reverb on there. So now we have two channels to handle our reverb. One is for the dry signal, the original recording, and the other is just the reverb sound. And then I use this send here to send a copy of the reverb or copy of this vocal to that reverb. So right now, if I hit play, you'll hear nothing, and then I'll turn up this little volume knob to increase the amount of reverb that we hear. Boots, cuts, boots, cuts, boots, cuts, boots, cuts, boots, cuts. Okay, so now we essentially are getting the same sound, right? We're getting a stereo reverb sound, but we can keep things separate. Meaning, if I wanna put a bunch of plugins on this vocal to make it sound, you know, EQ and compression and things like that, I can put it on here, and I don't have to put those on the reverb signal. The reverb signal stays untouched. And if I record another vocal that goes like this. So now I can adjust that one separately, right? I can turn it down because it's ridiculous. And I can say, you know what? I don't want, I want more reverb on that jig jig part and less reverb on that main part. And guess what? Since they're both being sent to the same reverb, um, I don't have to add in another reverb plugin. So if you're using a computer that's maybe not the fastest in the world, I can have reverb on as many channels as I want with only one plugin because we're, we're basically combining both of these sounds into the reverb, so it sounds like this. Boots, cuts, boots, cuts, boots. So stupid. Does that make sense? So I've got two tracks now, but still just one reverb. So if I created 10 more tracks of, of whatever, I could send each of them in different amounts to the reverb, and I'm still just using one reverb plugin. Reverbs can sometimes be pretty processor intensive. So if you have a computer that can't keep up with 10 reverb plugins in your session, then one reverb using the send works really well. Now let's say you already have a reverb in your song, 
and you have a new track you recorded and later on you say, I really want to send this track to the reverb. Well, in that instance, we don't want to use drag and drop because that's going to create a new reverb send. What we do in that instance is we come to this channel that we want to send to the reverb. We click the plus sign and we choose what we want. So room reverb is the name of the channel we created. So I just select it here. And it's essentially the same thing we did with drag and drop, except now it's sending to an existing reverb rather than creating a whole new one. Now there's one more way, the third way I want to show you, and this one is even, the, the what I just showed you here is the way I use reverb, I'd say 99% of the time. But let's say for some reason I wanted to put reverb on this, cuts, that ka sound, but just on that ka sound and nothing else. One easy way to do that is if I hold down command, and or if I just, if I use this tool here, which is, we call it the, um, the range tool, and I select this sound right there, and I just double click, it separates it into its own event or its own region. Uh, we call them events in Studio One. Now if I press F4, over here on the left hand side, we have a bunch of different like settings that we can mess with. And one of those, if you pull down, if you, if you can't see it, pull up on this bottom section, you'll see something called event effects. And that is, a, is basically putting some certain sounds on a particular piece of audio, but not the entire track. So I want to put a reverb just on this sound. So I have it selected. I enable event effects. Then I take that flat plate and drag it into here. So check out what happens. I've added reverb, but only to this section. So if we listen to the whole piece, boots, cuts, boots, cuts, boots, cuts, boots, cuts. So that's a kind of a roundabout way. If there's just one part in the song that you want to add reverb to, you can add it to it that way. And these are called event effects. So we can add as much different plugins as we want to a particular chunk of audio without it affecting the rest of the track. Now there are veterans who are telling me, yes, and there's several other ways that you can accomplish this same thing. That is a subject for another video. I've actually done some videos on that using automation. That's a little more advanced than I wanted to get into today. But today we've shown you, let's review. Let's delete that channel because that was ridiculous. Uh, let's delete this and I'll quickly redo all the three ways that I showed you to review and then we'll be done. The first way to add reverb to a channel, let's delete this, hang on, we're gonna delete all of these. So we're gonna start back from scratch, remove. I'm just right clicking and choosing remove. First way is to drag the plug into the track itself and that adds reverb to that channel, only that channel. That's number one. The second way is to drag a reverb to the send section, and now that does the whole send and return where I can adjust the level of the reverb and have them both on separate channels. The third way is to select a particular chunk of audio and in the event effects section, drag a reverb plugin, and then it adds it to just that one section. Hopefully, as you can see, there are lots of ways to do really creative stuff inside of Studio One. You can keep it as simple as you want, or you can expand. Uh, I've really just scratched the surface of different ways we can add effects to different sections of the song. But this should be enough to get you going for today. Go use some reverb, but remember, with great power, reverb, just don't overdo it. All right, that's it for me. Thanks for watching. See ya.